All right, folks, uh, I think we are on time, so we can get started. Uh, a very warm welcome. I think it's a Tuesday afternoon, so the room looks like a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I hope uh, people join in, but uh, again, uh, we'll be talking about chaos engineering here. Uh, uh, just with a show of hands, how many people have, uh, here are aware of chaos engineering already? Okay, I see a few, so I think that's what brought you here. And I'll uh, quickly uh, just introduce myself. My name is uh, Prithvi Raj. I'm working as a community manager at Harness. I've been a CNCF ambassador. I'm uh, leading the community for the Litmus Chaos CNCF incubating project. And this journey started four years ago at Maya Data, and it's uh, been four years, and I'm evangelizing chaos engineering, working uh, with uh, various Kubernetes community days, uh, community events and projects to just talk about uh, Kubernetes, cloud native uh, technology, and chaos engine engineering in general. So moving on, uh, the agenda for today, we'll be talking about uh, the cloud native era, why chaos engineering, how chaos engineering has come up. We'll uh, shed light on running a game day. And then we'll just talk about uh, Litmus Chaos, introduce the project to you. We'll quickly go through a demo, uh, introduce some uh, use cases by various end users, and then obviously we'll talk about the community and the future ahead. So moving on, uh, let's start with one of my favorite quotes, which actually keeps me motivated to be part of the chaos engineering space. I mean, there are a lot of developers out there. There are a lot of folks out there who, who talk about why the systems are working, how in the infrastructure is good, but they don't usually talk about what happens when it breaks, what exactly uh, goes through the system's infrastructure or anything where when, when you know things break down, there's, there's not a lot of chatter around it. It's like, all right, we'll fix it, or it was fine, it's, it, it was supposed to happen, but people are not really talking about why did it go wrong, what exactly went wrong in the, in the system, or how you can fix things which, which broke down when, when the systems were running in production. And that is why we, we understand how software has developed today, how microservices have changed the ecosystem altogether, and it's not just about, I mean, software, when, when delivered right, it's not just about resiliency, it's so much more, it's about control, governance, efficiency, quality, and innovation itself has brought a lot of problems. People talk about innovation in hand, but to be honest, I believe that innovation is kind of key to the problems that we face today. And we'll be talking about innovation in the reliability and resiliency space, and that is where chaos engineering has come up, or that's the, the, the overall idea behind chaos engineering. And this, this is how, you know, softwares or the cloud native era looks like. I mean, there's so much of complications that we face with our runtime architecture, CI, CD, uh, observability, analytics, management, uh, testing. So software is complicated and with the, the idea of ship, shipping more, I mean, 100 times more than we used to back in the monoliths, it's the, the complications have increased where uh, I'll, I'll move uh, to the fact how a software is analyzed according to me, but manufacturing software in the cloud native era has become hard and has thrown a lot of problems in a zero trust environment. So what exactly is the cost of a downtime? Is it just the money that companies are losing or is it more? I mean, recently you, you might have seen a lot of downtimes with Meta, Slack, uh, uh, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, uh, the e-commerce companies, Walmart. And it's, it's not just about the, the financial loss that they are facing. I mean, developers, they, they are getting the brunch of it, I mean, you already have a limited number of developers in your company, and then with these kind of outages happening, the the idea of debug, debugging, the idea of testing, again bringing a lot of QA mindset into into your software, that's that's becoming hard, and that's I think something which which people need to understand. Or these are the actual costs of downtimes. I mean, let's say you are hiring a, a developer at an average pay of hundred thousand dollars. 
and and you are facing down times or these are the kind of i mean repercussions that you face and your most of your developer time on mindset is going behind debugging writing integration tests and that that kind of becomes problematic because it just doesn't bring negativity in terms of the brand it also brings negativity in terms of the developer confidence and i think that's that's also leading to a lot of fatigue uh, amidst developers itself and that's i mean the the higher cost of downtime in in my opinion and as i spoke about the application in my perspective this is how an application looks like in my perspective where it's it's not just your application it's more of a pyramid with different layers there's your application but then there's there are other layers as well your mongodb kafka there are your cloud native services your uh, i mean metrics prometheus grafana then there are your kubernetes services and eventually there's your platform layer where you know each and every layer itself has a potential to have a vulnerability and it's it's subjected to a failure when in in a cloud native service where you're shipping 10 times more or 100 times more running various environments uh, an outage is possible in any sort of environment and there are fault i mean there are so many scenarios where faults can happen systems can go down and each layer, even if one particular layer has an outage it can affect your overall application it can Uh, it it can cause a huge disruption in in your environment itself and you might not even figure out until things go back up or you you are running some sort of a mitigation test to identify what, where exactly this failure happened so that is where i mean if you have not chosen not to decide you have still made a choice right you are still still making a choice that yeah this is how we want to go about it or certain things are luxurious to us chaos engineering as a term is not introduced to us or as as me being part of the community how i have seen the community react they believe that chaos engineering is a luxury and it's not something that that fits in the budget or we can accommodate there's not uh, there's no resource for it or not enough learnings that we have and that's where the adoption of chaos engineering is facing issues but what exactly is chaos engineering i mean that's that's what some people need to identify i mean the way i push it is see it as an integration test see it as you know something where you have already got uh, experiments written in terms of yamls or code and you need to identify it as an integration test where you are pushing it into your system integrating it to your software to identify what can go wrong when your systems are moving to production or even in your pre prod staging ci cd environments and chaos engineering is nothing but the idea of disrupting your systems inducing a fault injecting a failure deliberately into your system to identify what can go wrong in in real life like you are inducing a chaotic situation to just identify what happens in a in a real life scenario and how you can mitigate it before things go wrong and this is how the chaos engineering principle uh, looks like or the way you you test using chaos engineering so you identify your system you identify the steady state behavior of your system how your system is during the steady state you select the system and then you select a scenario or a chaos experiment usually a scenario is nothing but multiple chaos experiments run in parallel or series and once you are running the set of chaos experiments on your target system you identify you observe the results in terms of metrics and logs you identify what is exactly happening when the chaos fault or scenario is induced how your system is behaving and when it gets back up to its steady state or normal behavior what what is the amount of time the chaos ran for and how exactly did your system react what went down what stood i mean what was still working and then you use these learnings to basically you know target more reliability and improvements you basically want to make your systems more resilient you mitigate these kind of failure i mean the, the the possibility of these failures and ensure that your system can withstand unexpected disruptions so moving on uh, as i spoke about the chaos first principle the chaos first principle is nothing but testing before the fault happens or testing before anything goes wrong you are putting the deliberate effort to introduce chaos and disruptions in your system in your platform in your infrastructure to basically proactively identify the the weaknesses what can go wrong and how how resilient your systems are 
And I think this has been quoted by a lot of folks, especially Adrian Cockcroft from Netflix. He is one of the co-founders, co or you can say, one of the earliest members who brought in the, the chaos engineering term back in 2012, 2013. And they have advocated it very well why the chaos first principle is important. So we'll quickly run through uh, chaos engineering and all that I spoke about, the why, what, how, where, and who's of chaos engineering. Why chaos engineering is essential, I hope everyone has understood outages are expensive, they can cause a lot of reputational loss, uh, employ, uh, I mean, loss of confidence amongst employees. It's difficult to manage outages with your systems growing, with various microservices that you're adding uh, day, day in and day out in your cloud native applications. And obviously, cloud native applications are changing too fast and there are so many faults that, that can possibly happen. What exactly is chaos engineering? It's nothing, as I, as I spoke about, I believe it's more of an integration testing framework, but you are introducing a new culture into your DevOps uh, architectures, you're proactively testing your systems, you're inducing uh, faults in a controlled manner and you know try, trying to tune your blast radius, how, how much of a disruption your systems can take, for how long your systems can withstand disruptions, and then you are structurally improving the, the reliability or resiliency scenario or the ecosystem completely from, from a build perspective as well as a deploy perspective. So where uh, I see uh, chaos engineering coming in a DevOps loop, I see it more uh, on the ops side where the SREs, the QA engineers are getting involved. But again, uh, with the community growing and with uh, what we have been understanding right now, developers have also been equally involved in chaos engineering and developers are also using chaos testing as a way to test their systems. How to start with chaos engineering? You need to first identify the key stakeholders. You need to prepare for the larger goals. You need to identify which are the right teams that will go through this process or will kickstart this process uh, at, at your company level or at your team level. And then you need to choose the right tools. There are so many tools, open source tools, as well as I think uh, vendors out there which are helping you induce chaos in your systems. And then, you know, you start with a small process, with a small team, let's say start with some game days in your pre-production environment. And moving ahead, I think it, it becomes easier while you want to, you know, automate this and then design the right chaos scenarios, the experiments, manage them, use them for your bare metal VM environments. It, it becomes easier as you run more game days and, and have more findings. Uh, of, of how your systems are behaving to chaos. And as I spoke about, uh, I have covered a lot of it in the how itself. You start small in, in QA or pre-prod or your pre-staging environments as well. You start chaos in the infrastructure within a team that is more convinced towards chaos. Obviously, it's seen more as a, as a practice for SREs and I hope uh, an SRE or a QA engineer gets involved in helping you induce chaos, but then obviously when you understand more benefits, the engineering teams or various teams in your in, in your uh, company itself adopt this practice. And this is something we are seeing with, with end users as well, Adidas, Delivery Hero, iFood, all the users of Litmus itself have, have moved the chaos engineering practice from not just one team, but into multiple teams in, in their company itself. And yeah, as I spoke about, an SRE or a QA is the champion who leads the process. You start with a few tests, a few scenarios, maybe for a Kubernetes, you start with a pod delete or a pod uh, network loss experiment, and then other teams, other organizations follow the lead. So moving on, uh, uh, this is a, a few cases where chaos engineering is practiced, financial services, banks. Um, I mean, if you uh, talk about the stock market, they are usually using chaos engineering because there are multiple transactions happening every second. And then the highly scaled environments, obviously there are unexpected reliability issues that these highly scaled environments, let's say in the e-commerce space or in the, I mean, uh, demand generation space in the uh, uh, OTT space, they, they are facing in the FinTech telecom space. These are the environments which have possibility of high disruptions and Obviously, you need to identify the, the right scenarios where you can, you can practice chaos engineering. 
Moving on, uh, what's the vision? I mean, initially there were a lot of myths about chaos engineering that this cannot be brought into the CI CD, this just has to be practiced in the staging or pr production environments. Uh, you, you need to write a lot of experiments, this can't be automated, there's a lot of manual procedure behind it. But I believe that these are all myths which have changed in 2023, 2024 where you know you are integrating kiosks at each level in your platform you are defining and executing kiosk experiments for for let's say litmus or or open source projects out there kiosk experiments are just uh, like a git or you are just writing it in terms of a yaml code and it's it's pretty easy to write you write your ex own experiments you can use the sdk if if the the project provides uh, you so and then you can execute your experiments and appropriate scenarios by defining it yourself chaos engineering is is more being used as a service where you just you know bring the ui up you are able to analyze and visualize everything you have the experiments readily available and then you are able to you know pull out the metrics the logs the slos where exactly your systems are going down what exactly is your system behavior like and you are able to assess and impact uh, assess the impact and manage them accordingly so with this uh, here is a game day flow that we we ran with one of the end users and how a game day exactly looks like how you define a chaos engineering game day a chaos engineering game day is nothing but an event that you are running in your in your company a project group or organization with it, it with a defined time limit and you define the basic flow of how, how chaos engineering is run. So initially you identify the stakeholders, as I told you, you need to identify a champion, then you, ident you identify who are the team members who are gonna be part of the role, who are gonna play the exact roles uh, in running the game day, and then you define your environment, is it a cloud environment or an on-prem, and how you're gonna be going about it, what exactly your infrastructure is like, and how you're gonna you know, run induced chaos, you define your workloads, list of services and workloads in the environment, which are going, going to be targeted or which are going to face the, the chaos scenarios. And you obviously select the aids which are gonna help you observe what's going wrong. I mean, there's Datadog, Dynatrace, uh, Grafana, you pull out the metrics and then you uh, observe what's going wrong. And, and moving ahead, you define your steady state of your system as I spoke about the, the chaos engineering process altogether. You list the experiments or create the scenarios, you define the uh, guardrails. Basically, these are the pre and post checks. We call it probes as well for litmus chaos, where you are identifying the health of the pods or you are using health checks to basically ensure more resiliency beyond the, the chaos experiment itself. And just in case things go wrong, because chaos engineering, people people see it as, as something which can be deadly or, or are skeptical to to use itself so you need to have a rollback mechanism what if things go wrong so you need to create uh, a mechanism for unexpected events and just you know for what aids that is you know additional verification items let's say slack alerts you can you can uh, enable your dashboards accordingly you can get some alerts on your email your git so so these are the kind of processes that you need to ensure and eventually you you know, introduce the chaos platform to the stakeholders, build the right experiments, execute them, and the last thing is, create, you know, having that root cause analysis, where, where a game day is not just run for what can go wrong, but let's say there are failures that have happened before. So if you want to analyze them as well, you, you obviously go ahead and perform these kind of game days. So we have taken a, a, like a demo environment for the game day, where, we, where you can see how the environment, the application, the logs, what exactly are you using, which applications you're using to conduct a game day. But while we run the demo or we talk about the chaos experiment that we are running, we'll, we'll, we'll speak more about the environments that, that we are using to run a demo chaos experiment. So this is Litmus Chaos. It's a CNCF incubating project uh, and it's, uh, I mean, openly used by many end users we have we have identified through scarf that it's more than 500 companies that have used litmus for let's say a poc uh, chaos in their pre-production environments production environments and it's it's an open source tool with cross cloud support which helps you induce chaos in your systems in a in a controlled way 
the, the, the best part about litmus is you can schedule your own experiments, you can decide the time intervals for how long you want to run your chaos, when do you want your chaos to stop, do you want your chaos to run uh, during the daytime or at night. You, you can uh, introduce stakeholders, you can involve team members. So there's obviously multiple people who you can run litmus uh, with. And then obviously these are some stats out here that uh, we recently hit 30 million Docker pulls for the chaos operator. There are, uh, the, the Slack community is uh, very vibrant and post this talk, I'll, I'll share some resources with you where you can join the community and also contribute to litmus or use the open source tool which makes it easier for you. So here is uh, how the architecture looks like. The front facing role, the SRE developer QA, interact with the, the chaos uh, control plane, uh, which, which basically is the front end, uh, also known as the chaos center, where you have the authentication server, the MongoDB and the GraphQL, which help you um, get access to the experiments. And then there's your chaos execution plane where the real chaos is happening. So the execution plane, it can be on your Kubernetes infra or your GCP, AWS, Azure, VMware, where you have your workflow controller, which is nothing but uh, chaos workflows uh, created with, uh, with Orgo CD. So you have multiple chaos experiments created in, uh, as, as a workflow CR. And then there's your event tracker, your subscriber agent, your event tracker and exporter basically help you to export uh, the, the events that are happening while chaos is induced. And then these metrics can, again, as I said, be visualized on your da da dashboards, which, which are integrated with the chaos center itself. And then your chaos experiment is nothing but, uh, but a custom resource, as well as the chaos engine, which is helping the, the chaos run is also a custom resource. And then your operator, which basically handles your namespace or cluster scope, your RBAC controls, how, how you secure your mechanisms is, is basically ensuring the overall operation for the backend is, is the, the, the last step, which is basically working with the stateless applications or the middleware services and the stateful components as well, which are in the backend. And this is uh, the, the, the other diagram is basically the smaller version of how the control plane, the chaos center and the execution plane where the actual chaos is happening looks like. So moving on, uh, I'll, I'll quickly uh, just cover how you can get started with Litmus. Either you can install via Helm chart or you can use some kubectl commands to, to install Litmus in your application. It's a two-step process. And once you apply your manifest, your Litmus will be up in terms of a very good looking UI. Uh, this is the latest Litmus 3.0 UI, which, which has been uh, adopted from the Harness Chaos Engineering UI itself. And again, it, it helps you basically easily induce faults in your system where earlier it was more about, you know, running the YAML, checking it out on your terminal. This UI has made it very easy for the community to create, orchestrate and analyze your experiments. So as soon as uh, you are able to log into your system, this is how the, the UI looks like. Uh, before we go into the demo, which is, which is a video, recorded video, this is how the UI looks like, where you enable your infrastructure. You basically create an infrastructure where you're running your chaos experiments. You, you define that infrastructure. That is where you run your experiments. And then you create an environment, let's, uh, which where the, the Kubernetes chaos or the cloud level chaos is actually happening. So once you are able to uh, create uh, an infra on the overview side itself, uh, you, you are straight away moved on to the environment. And once an environment, let's say I'm creating a dev environment is created, these are the services that are running in terms of Litmus. So you see you have the exporter, operator, event tracker, and the front end, which is called the Litmus portal, and then your MongoDB and subscriber working as well. So you, you need to know your dependencies because once a fault happens or once you're inducing a fault, you, you get to see what are the dependencies that are running or, or that stopped while the chaos ran. And these are the experiments. Litmus is a one-of-a-kind tool where you have access to a chaos hub, which is nothing but a marketplace where you already have around 50 predefined experiments. So as you can see, there are, it started as a tool for Kubernetes itself where there were most uh, experiments for Kubernetes, but then 
with with the community developing and contributing more projects now you can see there are experiments for aws azure gcp spring boot and more being contributed in terms of app level and 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 beyond let's say kafka experiments cassandra experiments and more so with this we'll move on to the demo i'll quickly uh, play the demo that we have recorded and then we'll we'll uh, just uh, talk about the the references and everything so as you can see uh, just a second yeah as you can see we are trying to create a chaos experiment and it's it's called the cart service skill because we'll be using this experiment on on the sample application that we're using we already created the infra as as i spoke about and how do you start off? You start off from a blank canvas, or, or you can use the predefined templates that are already there on the Chaos Hub, or you can upload your own YAML file, which is basically you writing your own experiment. So Litmus has an SDK, which helps you write your own experiment on Go or Python or Ansible, and you can push that experiment itself as a YAML file. So you start, we are starting with a blank canvas here. We had a few predefined experiments here. And this is the sample application we have, which is an online boutique shop. It's nothing but an e-commerce application. And these are the services that are running. So you have the front end, you have various services such as the cart service, the shipping service. And uh, just a second, I think I'm running it a little faster. Yeah. So you, the, these are the various services that are running, the ad service, the cart service, the checkout service, the currency, and we are going to disrupt one of the services that are running on these on this sample application, and which is called the cart service, basically. And uh, once, I mean, this is a, a, a sample application created by GCP, so once you go to the GCP microservices demo, you'll be able to find the online boutique uh, sample application, which, which we are trying to disrupt right now. So once uh, you, you, you have this application up, you'll see the various labels, as you saw the app label as card service, which we are trying to disrupt. And this is how the online boutique application looks like, where you are able to see various products listed on the service. And we are trying to add one of these products that is a sunglass onto the cart. And this is the card service that we are going to disrupt once the, the chaos happens. So here we are on the Litmus uh, dashboard itself, and we'll try to build the experiment right now. And uh, yeah, so we, we are selecting a predefined experiment, and I think we'll be doing the basic Kubernetes experiments. The, that is a pod delete. A pod delete is the most run experiment on Litmus itself. We are selecting the app kind as de uh, deployment. We already have created a demo namespace. You can create two, uh, a cluster scope or a namespace scope label. And then we are going to define the app label later on as I spoke about the, the card service in, in the YAML file itself. So you can either tune it through the UI or you can tune the YAML file while, while running the kiosk with, with the changes that you want into the dependencies. And here are the tunings that you can add for for how long you want the chaos to run and what are the intervals and as i spoke about the probes which is nothing but a custom health check so this is something we have mandated or become mandatory with litmus 3.0 so you need to add at least one probe let's say here we are adding an http probe which with various modes one of them is sot which is the start of test but then there are various uh, modes that you can select, let's say end of test, edge, which is basically st at the start of the test and the end of the test. So there are various modes that you can add during the, the health check itself, which, which you know help you enhance the, the health check for the application. So for this, I think uh, we are using the start of test and we have added this probe and applied the changes. And now we'll, we'll start with the, with the pod delete experiment. As I spoke about, you can tune your YAML file. So we are going to be adding the app label here. So once you, you go down, you'll, you'll see how, how you are running the, the chaos for 15 seconds. What are the target pods, the default health check. We are running the HTTP probe. And yeah, we added the app label as the card service.
So once that is done, our experiment is saved and maybe we can use uh, this experiment later on as well in case you are trying to run more of the chaos. But yes, as you can see, a new uh, chaos experiment is scheduled and now you will see uh, how on our litmus uh, terminal itself, you can see that the card service skill experiment has started running and it's around 26 seconds that it has run. And as I spoke about the architecture before, it's again a custom resource and an operator helps you run that. So once we are done with this, we, we go back and we see that one of the uh, experiment has already run and it has completed. And now you will see the, the online boutique app go down. This is the pod delete uh, runtime that, that has been created. So as you can see, all the services are running right now, but the card service has, has stopped running three seconds ago. So if we refresh the page, you see the, the card service went down. And there's a, a rollback mechanism that Litmus has. So it automatically, uh, or I mean, it's, it's in an automated way you roll back. So once the chaos has run for the particular duration, the system will will automatically go up and here you can you can monitor everything you can see how did your probes run what are your logs looking like and then you can use uh, a, another application let's say an elastic or a logs or a splunk to to just monitor your logs identify your logs and then obviously as i spoke about the resiliency score is basically how resilient your system was or how resi how easily the systems came back up, what are the weaknesses that were found. So a resiliency score is an uh, accumulative score of all the metrics that were run. And once uh, your system goes back up, here we, we are again going to check if, if our system, if, if our card service is back up or no. And as you can see, the card service is back up. And here you go, the, the card service comes back again once, once the chaos is run. So after the test, you can obviously identify various things. You can, th these are the learnings that you use or once you have run your game day, these are the learnings that you take back and you, you jot down all the monitoring and metrics that, that went through while the chaos experiment was run. And then you can, you can obviously save them and the, it, there's a cleanup uh, of resources once the chaos experiment is run. So I think we have around eight minutes of time left. So I'll uh, go back to my slides where we'll just take a look at a few uh, reference use cases. Here are reference use cases by end users. Delivery Hero is a food delivery app. They are building a chaos uh, platform using Litmus where around 4, 400 services will be uh, subject to chaos using Litmus. I mean, they have used circuit breaking, fallback mechanisms, scaling behavior, and, and timeouts and various, various faults such as network latency and corruption. And various verticals further will be using Litmus itself to just, just have the testing mechanism. Adidas, they, have, they started with a pre-production uh, staging environments, and I, I believe now they have moved to production through the CICDs where they are injecting failures with help of uh, permission scope is, uh, isolation, authorization, and obviously the predefined scenarios as you saw. Uh, one of the architectures that I will be talking about is FIS. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that, but FIS again, uh, they, they have been using uh, Litmus alongside Captain. So they are using chaos engineering and also managing SLOs and, and defining them with projects like Captain, and I think that there are some other mechanisms that they have used and they are also using uh, a, a load generator to basically generate a lot of load and see how chaos reacts during that sort of a scenario. And Flipkart, it's again a company owned by Walmart and they have been using, they have built 
chaos engineering completely for their virtual machines using Litmus, and, and they have been using uh, Litmus as a, I mean, platform to run their chaos experiments that they have written down for your, their virtual machines. So here's how uh, the architecture by FIS looks like. So they are running that, them in their, in their CI CD, they are generating load using J meter or a neo load. And once that load is generated, they, they inject uh, chaos using litmus or chaos blade for, for other experiments beyond Kubernetes, which is basically their chaos tools. They inject chaos in their target application uh, alongside the load that they are induced they have induced and then they are using Dynatrace to monitor the same Splunk for the logs and the Prometheus met metrics alongside the, the evaluation of their SLOs on Captain are, are basically uh, the part of their evaluation system and how they are using Chaos and I think this is a similar architecture which has been run by telecom companies. Uh, Orange has used a, a similar architecture itself so if you are wanting to get started with, with Chaos this is one of the primary architectures that, that you can refer to. So what is the future ahead? I mean, uh, obviously the idea is to add more chaos experiments, create a maturity model in your platform in engineering to help organizations understand what exactly is the right way to run chaos or how exactly you mature in your journey for chaos. You follow the right industry standards, you add more chaos experiments, more uh, uh, the, the idea is to make it more secure. So we have already written a few first tests around it. We are trying to define an SLSA uh, architecture and a threat model around it. And uh, that's where you ensure that chaos is being uh, conducted in a safe environment with the right security uh, framework in, in process. And then obviously you need to budget around it. You need to create a framework where teams can not just budget around and uh, user tools, but also budget around open source implementation itself. So how you can be a part of the community, this is a QR you can scan to basically uh, get access to the GitHub. Here you can uh, identify which are the right repos to contribute to. We have the charts where you can put out the experiments, the workflows where you can create more scenarios. You can also do non-code contributions in terms of contributing to the documentation or the website. And there's there's so much that, that requires contribution right now. So, and, and the project is looking to move to graduation. So, so you can just try and contribute to the, to the right set of things and identify where you can contribute to. And feel free to drop a start to the project. The project is growing. This is the community Slack. So beyond this talk, if you want to join the community Slack, uh, understand what are the questions that are being asked by the community, how you can contribute back to the community. Uh, this is the Slack channel you join. Uh, so you can scan this or you can, if you're part of the Kubernetes Slack already, you just join the Litmus channel and get started with your contributions. And last up here is the CNCF graduation proposal. So just like Kubernetes or Prometheus or projects like Harbor, uh, is, I mean, uh, Istio and all the other projects that you have graduated. Litmus Chaos hopes to become a graduated project soon where you, you see more maturity and end user usage that, that comes alongside. So feel free to just scan the code, get access to the graduation proposal, comment your support for the project. So with this, uh, thank you so much. I think we are just in time and I hope uh, you, you got some insight on chaos engineering or perhaps Litmus becomes one of the tools you get started with. And uh, I think I'll, I'll appreciate some questions if we have any right now, or I think we have a minute and then maybe we can just connect a sync and, and discuss. Thank you so much, everyone.